Should we include uh, include this part in the video? <laughs> it doesn't matter. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, yeah. We got some questions for you, uh -huh. and um, and then we're gonna do some math with you. This Aren't is you exciting. Me? Well, before <laughs> I'm just setting it up. No. <laughs> Not have to go in and like edit the audio. I'm sorry. Just, it's a really um, nice virtual background you got there. It is, it is nice. <laughs> You'll see virtual geese fly by every once in a while. That's like one of those video backgrounds. All right, so before we do get started, though, um, yes. why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Who are you? What do you do? Sure. Uh, my name is, is Peter Ostrander, and I'm the magnet coordinator. <laughs> you didn't say what you do. I, that's, I just have a title. Uh, really, what I do um, is uh, during regular times, I sit in my office and, and be grumpy. And, and fuss at people and twiddle my thumbs. That's like any good administrator. Um, and in a virtual world, it's just a little bit harder because people don't actually try to dial in to be grumped at. So, um, but I work on, you know, I, I work on the schedule. I work with any student issues. Um, I do a lot of different things, uh, just like any other school administrator. If you were picking up materials, you would have seen myself there with Mr. Colley. We were doing that. So um, we do whatever we need to do to make sure the school is functioning as, as smooth as possible, I guess. Awesome. So I'll start with the questions and then Mrs. Contreras, if we want to alternate, that'd be cool. Um, mm -hmm. The first question we have for you is um, what hobby during quarantine have you already given up on? So I, I was told this summer that my hobby was supposed to be learning how to knit socks. Um, <laughs> my wife knits and, um, but she doesn't like to knit socks. She knits like sweaters and hats and scarves and um, things like that. Um, and so she thought it would be a good idea for me to knit socks. And, and I actually figured, yeah, that would be nice and everything like that. But I, I never even picked up a set of needles. I have no idea uh, how to knit socks. Although she, I think she's pushing for that still to be my hobby once, once we have enough time to get that done. But I did give up on that pretty quickly. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Contreras, before you ask your question, or I don't know if you're about to. But I wanted to hear what your hobby that you've given up on. on. Yes. Oh, it's, a hobby. it's actually very similar to Mr. Ostrander's. I gave up on crocheting because the um, the library near where I live, they have like a DIY center. So you can like check out things. And so I checked out a set of crochet hooks and I bought some yarn and I was like so excited. And then I stopped. How about you, Mr. Kern? What hobby have I already given up on? I feel like I've forgotten it because it was so long ago. <laughs> Mary Kate, what's a hobby I've given up on? Wasn't it that like 1,000 push-ups thing? Okay, she said the exact same thing you said, Mrs. Contreras. I was going to do 100 push-ups a day, and I did it for an entire week, and then I gave up pretty much immediately. <laughs> so uh, on the topic of hobbies, Mr. Ostrander, what is a hobby that you don't have yet, but you would like to have? Well, well, so I know I'm, I, that will be the first hobby I pick up again. Like, I, I don't like to have a lot of hobbies in the queue. That's just too much I, I, because then you just start thinking about everything that you haven't done in life. So if I only have one hobby in my queue, there's only one thing I haven't done in my life. That's easier for me to handle as a human. Um, so I don't, I don't know what will, because I had to give up a lot of my other hobbies that, I, that I'd already been doing, right? I, I go to a lot of baseball games. So I travel to go see baseball stadiums. I do geocaching, which requires travel. Uh, so a lot of those sort of things I couldn't do over the summer. So I think instead of creating something new, I, I want to get back to some of those things that I enjoy doing, going, going to antique stores or flea markets and things like that, because I collect license plates. So looking for those. So those are all sort of things that I just haven't really been doing. Um, a little bit of geocaching here and there where it's safe, but, um, but for the most part, I've had to give up. So I think it would be getting back to some of those. Um, although I will say I was tempted when we were doing materials distribution, the art department was really great about getting kids stuff they need. So they had all these guitars and pianos. And then last week, Mr. Varrock had put in these ceramics, the, 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 the tables. And I have been watching this show called the ceramics throwdown, which is like a, it's like a, you know, any of those competition shows, but they, they make ceramics and then the, the best pot, you know, the best potter of the week and the, the worst potter gets sent home and everything like that is really interesting to me because there's chemistry and other things involved with pottery, although it seems very messy, but I was tempted to like, if nobody picks up that table, maybe, maybe I'll borrow me a ceramics table and, and pick that up as a hobby. Um, I just don't know where I do it in my house where clay wouldn't be splattered all over. So I think that's, I would have to negotiate some space. <laughs> 
could just set up some like drop cloth, you know? Like, like Maybe, yeah, just things. enough tarps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they sell really big tarps. Maybe yeah, you could yeah. get one. Or in your son's just room. Yeah, just yeah, there. why not? Yeah, yeah, he's old enough. He should be moved out anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My answer to the question is bagpipes. And I'll put a period right there and then let me just <laughs> confirm. <laughs> I want to get better at keyboard. That's what I would do. It's it's right there, but I still haven't been able to touch it because I've been stuck with the computer. You mean like keyboard, like piano keyboard? Yeah. yeah. Not like typing, Mavis typing or whatever. Uh, not type. so much. Yeah, I'm very much satisfied with the rate that I type. It is yeah. slightly faster than my grandparents. But not as fast as Mr. Schwartz. <laughs> No one's as fast. For students, if you didn't know, Mr. Schwartz is very fast at typing. Yes. It's like almost like you have the double take. You're like, is this really typing? Yeah. Or is it just coming out of his mind? Yeah. All right. Our, um, our next question is, and this is a question that uh, we think we're going we're gonna to do this with other people as well. This is like a, a staple. What is your favorite pizza topping? So this is easy. It's mushrooms. Mushrooms are the best of the tea pizza topping. You can have it just a plain mushroom pizza, which is great. So like when I go to New York and you buy it by the slice, I always get a slice with mushrooms. That's the best way to get it. Um, uh, followed by olives and then onions, I think. Like if I were to get a three topping pizza, two topping pizza, it's mushroom and olives. A three topping pizza, it's mushrooms, olives, and onions. Like what about those. a four topping pizza? Uh, um, I don't know that I want a four to four topping. I think Sometimes too many toppings. It makes the crust soggier. It's heavier. The pizza doesn't hold itself upright. Um, so I don't know if I would have a fourth. Um, I don't know. I mean, I like, to be honest, I like tomatoes on my pizza, like a tomato too, maybe just tomatoes. Um, instead, in, in addition to tomato sauce, tomatoes on pizza are pretty good too. Like, I don't know that I would. I don't think I would opt for that. I would rather have the three topping pizza. No need to be a glutton. I'm pepperoni. I feel like I, I, I've said it. I, maybe I said something different last time, but I, think you I said always. Anchovies or something last time. No, I had anchovies when I said ancho. Um, Mr. Culver said that he liked. What did he say? Um, I, think it was mushrooms. I think it was mushrooms, and then and then and then oh, he man. was talking about how people don't usually like that, and I brought up how people really don't like anchovies. No That's pepperoni, great. definitely. Okay. And but the good pepperoni, where you like you get the pep the the thing of pepperoni, you have to cut it. But then you gotta then you gotta get the oil, the pepperoni grease off the pizza. Oh, you you eat that too. Bit. It's okay. That's what the plate is for, or the box. You know, if you're just eating it over the box. I I feel that somehow, when you get older, you have to worry about things like sodium because of high blood pressure and cholesterol. And even though a pizza in a, in and of itself is bad for those sort of things, you know, processed cheese, high in sodium and, and high in fat and things like that, like pepperoni just makes it so much worse. <laughs> so I, I think when I was younger, pepperoni would have been, was fine. But now I, I don't, I tend not to eat just a plain pepperoni pizza. That's just not. You know. mm. I like the Jardinero peppers. Those are really nice. But what kind of peppers? The Jardinero ones, like the, the like pickled ones. Pickled ones, yeah. Yeah, but those uh, I actually only like in deep dish pizza. Uh, so like on like regular pizza, like not Chicago style deep dish. Then yeah. I think I would need to say either buffalo chicken or double cooked bacon, which are so what are they? What vegetables. Is, please explain the difference. I don't know the difference between, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it's they cook it twice, but what, what is a double cooked bacon? You cook it so it's like super duper crispy, and okay. then you put it on top of the pizza, and then you bake the pizza. Oh, and then you bake it, so it's the second cooking. Okay, it's huh. delicious. So it's you, you don't bacon. put raw uh, bacon on pizza and cook it once. No. Uh, <laughs> that, I don't think it'd cook right. No. I don't know, maybe because there's a, there's a difference between that and like because it's like crumbled bacon pieces right. versus like I don't know like bacon bits. Like bacon bits, the brand of horribly flavored bacon bits that yeah they're, they look really like great. um they look like fruity pebbles but they're actually yeah. like bacon flavored <laughs> now the, what, what bothers me about what you said though is you mentioned deep dish pizza first is that because deep dish pizza is your preferred form of pizza i think uh if if i had access to chicago style deep dish pizza as readily as i have access to regular pizza like like if Costco sold Chicago style deep dish pizza, I would probably go for the deep dish. Huh. All right. There's some Chicago pizzas out there that you can get flash, uh, what's it called? Flash frozen and then sent to you. Send, yeah. 
from exactly. Chicago. Exactly. I, I don't know that I've ever had a really good, every time I've had it, it's just been too, it's been like a stew in a crust. Like, <laughs> I feel like that's what it is. <laughs> Maybe. All right, we have another question about food. Okay. Oh, what's the most impressive thing you've eaten? So that's that's interesting. So you guys ever seen the show Man vs. Food? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So my older son and I, because it was out when he was still younger, um, before he just became a moocher, and I actually tried to prepare you know him for life and those sort of things. We would visit all of the. Um, uh, we would try to visit all the Man vs. Food places whenever we traveled. Right. Um, however, we never did any of the food challenges because that's not like, I'm not like, I can eat a lot. I mean, you know, (laughs) I know you can't, the camera probably takes off 40 pounds, but (laughs) I can eat a lot. And, and, but I don't, I don't, I'm not one to eat like huge amounts. So if it's impressive size wise, sure. I can, I could, I could eat a pizza in my heyday. That's not a problem, but that's not, you know, um, so, you know, when you think about other things like weirdest foods, things like that, I, again, I'm, I don't know that I've eaten really weird things. I think my trip to New Orleans, I tried to eat everything they put in front of me, like turtle soup and alligator pie and those sort of things. So, so I'm not, I, you know, I don't mind eating a lot of different things, but I, I, maybe I haven't traveled to the most exotic places to get the most exotic things. So I don't know, alligator pie, maybe I'm going to go that way instead of impressive, like amount, I'll go impressive, like you know, I had to go out and kill an alligator and put it in a pie. Although you I wrestled did, the alligator. All I, did was really <laughs> pie, <but laughs> I don't know when I eat alligator pie, I usually wrestle the alligator myself. <laughs> it's the only way to do it. It's authentic that way. It is. And you can tenderize it by giving it a few extra. <laughs> I, I'm sure PETA is going to go right after us for this. Uh, please know that no animals were harmed in the making of this video. We didn't, I did not actually go out and kill my own alligators. <laughs> For me, you can get this right across the street from um, from Blair at the Chipotle. But I've, have you ever been to Chipotle and asked for double everything? No. Like when they when they do a scoop of rice, you say, "I want another one of those." Really? And then they go to the beans. I want to, they put a scoop of beans. I want another one of those. Everything's it, free except fit? for the guacamole and the meat. So oh. you just ask for double everything. And then one time I did also do double meat, and double guacamole, and this burrito was like. <laughs> They had two tortillas holding it together. It was like this big. I ate the whole thing. Did you eat it with a fork? No, I mean, I tried to eat it like this. But yeah, but did, did you get <laughs> Ultimately, I, yeah, I probably ate it with my hands. You and can't the... call it a burrito if you ate it with a fork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you're <laughs> just still it's a some, massive amount some of Some sort of pie, if that's the case. <laughs> Mine is also a burrito, but it was, instead of it being like a Chipotle burrito, it's, there's this place called Rafa's in... Um, uh, El Paso, and that, I think it's El Paso. Actually, I don't know. It was near my where my in laws live. But th- this burrito is like the length of like from my elbow to the fingertips, like burrito. And I, I, I also ate it all. It was, I, I didn't eat much the rest of the day, but I crushed that burrito. <laughs> it was very nice. Well, if I'm gonna get yelled at, we just have to make sure. Was it burrito the entire time? Yes. Dang it. I, I see. I have no doubts with Miss Contreras. You, <laughs> on the other hand. <laughs> All right, we have one final question for you. Then we're going to get in some math. You're going to do some math with us. We're excited. Um, Sounds good. Um, what is your dream for the uh, ninth grade class? So my dream for the ninth grade class. That's that's good. First of all, I dream that eventually they'll be able to meet each other because I think that's going to be important, right? Um, you know, we try to really spend a lot of ninth grade building uh, a team and, and collaboration and all that kind of stuff. And, and that's hard to do in this setting. Um, and so, so my hope is that when we do come back to school, we can spend some time doing that. And, and we need to look at how we schedule 10th grade maybe to, to help, help do that. So my hope is that once we get through this, um, they can kind of be a nice supportive team to, to help push through their last few years in high school. That's, that's going to be my hope. That's awesome. I forgot to think about what I um what my dream for the Magna Ninth graders is. My dream it's, is to continue enthusiastic podcast discussion uh, participation all four years. That's good. That'd yes. 
because we can't control what the uh, 10th, 11th, and 12th kidders do. But right now they're doing podcast responses, which is Good. awesome. Good. This Good. is the guy who's sending them out to you. Yes. Um, and I apologize it's not me personally. I didn't know that that was the expectation. But, but there has been requests. <laughs> so we'll we're, we're working on it. We're working on it, class. Um, cool. There you go. Um, let's go ahead and get some uh, started with some math. So go ahead and share my screen. Boom. Here we are. Now we're going to be in the top right-hand corner of the screen, Mr. Ostrander. So, so we're going to try really to hard. Off. These equations are easy, Mr. Kirk. <laughs> They're all null set. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Done. You got anything else? You need six different ways of writing the null set, Mr. That, there's all. There's one yeah, way. What do you got? A line through it. That's it. <laughs> or maybe a little squiggly like an empty set. <laughs> yeah, like that one. <laughs> My professor in college used the Greek letter phi. But I've learned that that's like not a generally accepted use, I never which is like kind of confused the heck out of me. Anyways, we got a title list. This will be your page. All right. Okay. All right. Now you guys can see how to spell his name, although it doesn't really look like I'm spelling it right. That's an R there. It is. Yeah, it's spelled right. You don't need to listen. There's so many letters. If you leave one out, no one cares. Today's today. And the period is an, is a natural number. Okay. Um, so we got some uh, equations for you. They're not there for a reason. Right. Um. We are going to progress through nine equations. There are nine here. Um, right. But I don't want them to be revealed to you immediately. So I'm going to write them down. And I'm going to have you solve them the way that you intuitively think to solve them. Okay. Right? Because we've talked about a lot in our class that there's lots of ways to solve equations. Right. I want you to solve these a way that just your, your heart, your soul says to solve it. So here's the first one. All right. X squared yeah. equals nine. All right. I got this one. All right. Um, you just take the square root of both sides. <laughs> awesome. So um, what's the square root of nine? That's uh, somewhere around three. Okay. Awesome. I was, I was worried you were going to say plus or minus three. But square root of nine is three. It, 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 should I have said plus or minus three? Now no, you got but, me. <laughs> so so with, with the now, the, these two questions, uh, the equation and uh, this, this kind of what I'm going to call an identity, Yes. Um, are a little bit different. This one's saying, what values one squared give you nine? Yes. And this one's saying, what is the square root of nine? They're different questions. Right. Uh, because what values, plural, when squared give you nine? That would be plus or minus three. Yeah. So the solution to the equation that I've given you is plus or minus three. Uh, but we are using the square root operation to get the three. It's actually, to be really technical, it's plus or minus the square root of nine. Uh, but we'll write three. All right, so you intuitively thought, let's just square root. Because, uh, Mrs. Contreras, can you think of another way to solve this thing? Another way of solving, like aside from graphing it? Graphing it is one way. So, so graph parabola and then graph the line uh, y equals 9 and see where they intersect. Which is going to be at negative 3 and positive 3. I'm going to throw one more at you guys. Um, and I say this a lot in my class. Whenever you're solving something, move everything to one side. And then factor, x plus 3, x minus 3 is equal to 0. And then I also get plus or minus 3. So we've done this three ways, and we've gotten the same answer every single time. But I want to draw attention to Mr. Which Ostrander's. One right, Which one is? One of us has to be most right. <laughs> Mr. Contreras, who do you think is the most right? Well, I think right now, based on where we are on our cameras, Mr. Ostrander is the most right, but I'm about to beat him. So we can... <laughs> <laughs> um, I, th I have a feeling only one of us was in the top right corner so that might not make sense but <laughs> I think that people will be able to uh, infer what was happening there so I'm actually going to erase all the work that Mrs. Contreras and I did here on the side because my original question wasn't um, what's the best way it's what way does your heart and soul say and you said to square root right All right. so I that's like kind of the, the idea here is we want to solve these the way that you might just intuitively think to solve them here's another one 3x squared equals 12. All right. Uh, so we're going to get rid of that 3 somehow. So uh, divide both sides by 3. That should give us x squared is 4. And then you can do it one of those three ways we just learned, <laughs> which is either to, to take the square root of it, <laughs> which would be x equals the plus or minus the square root of 2, uh, or square root of 4, which is plus or minus 2. Uh, or we can graph it or we can uh, factor it out or move the four to the other side, x minus two, x squared minus four is zero, 
and factor it as x plus two times x minus two. You, any of those three ways. It's amazing. Perfect. I now have three ways. My um, and, and <laughs> but I'm still going to go with take the square root. Awesome. Awesome. And I bet you there's even more ways. Quadratic formula. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Sure. I sneezed. <laughs> Um, here's another account, one. Mr. Kirk. Yes. I X move, squared. Hold on, I got to move people out of the way. I got to move. There you go. I'm moving where you're floating off that. All right. Now I'm All right. Ready. Oh, oh, true, true. Well, I think I might need to stroll down a little bit. X squared equals seven. What do you want to do? Uh, well, I could do. Do we care that it's uh, a nice number? Um, I don't think we care. But but we talked. I did. You, we I said something earlier that is going to help us here. You did. Kind so of. They, so, like, you mean do it your way, move it to the other, to the same no, side? No, no, I, I want you to do it the way that you love. I would just say x equals the root of seven. And I'd yeah, be well, <laughs> well, so it's not just the root of seven. Yeah. You're absolutely right, root of seven, but what are we missing? Uh, plus or minus. Plus or minus. So, in all of these examples, you said the plus or minus the square root of nine, the plus or minus the square root of four. Here, plus or minus the square root of seven. In the previous two, we could simplify, but here we don't. Right. Right. No need. All right. No need. And we could, I don't know, it's between two and three, the square root of seven, but it's rational. I don't have enough space on my page to write it. Yep. Um, X minus three, quantity squared is yep. equal to 20. Oh, okay. Mm. Um, let's see. Mm, what am I going to do? Um, so we could just, in fact, we could multiply it out and then solve from there. That's one way. That's like the way I, nat I would ma maybe naturally think we could do that. Um, we could just take this, the, the root of the whole thing, um, and uh, that would give us x minus 3 equals plus or minus root 20, which is plus or minus 2 root 5 or something like that. Uh, nice. And then just subtract or add 3 to that, and then you get x. I, I like the way that you thought to solve this. Now, you said we could expand, move 20 over, factor, do all that stuff, but this seems like it might have been faster. Three steps. All right, so, so, go, go. All right, here's another one. Negative right. two uh -huh. times x plus four, quantity squared. Right. Plus 72 is equal right. to zero. All right. Um, so let's uh, get the 72 out of there. Um, subtract 72 from each side, and then uh, divide each side by negative two. So I get x plus four. It gives us something like 36. Wait, we lost our um, lightsaber noise. Oh. <laughs> we make yeah. lightsaber now sounds when we uh, cross things off, just so you know. All right. I, that, thought that was lightsaber. Okay. Um, and then, then, we, then we take the root of both sides. So we get x plus 4 is equal to uh, plus or minus root of 36, which is 6. And so then we have to do get rid of that 4. So subtract 4 from each side. There you go. And then we can go a little bit further here. Just write 2 and what's the other one? Negative 10? Uh, 2 and uh, negative 10, yeah. Yeah. Well, so like, there are lots of ways. We've, we've now established with lots of ways, but it seems as though with all the problems that I've strategically chosen here, yes. the best way is to deal with that square root in the square rooting fashion. Right. All right, here's yeah. one. Where we don't no like those, those exponents because they think they're above everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Down our level. All right, uh, here's one that doesn't have a square. Now, I, hold on, I got I to move you back to the other side. Hold on, all right, there we go. <laughs> all right, uh, all right, so, um, well, uh, we could, um, this is just x plus five squared, right, on the left? Oh, nice so catch. With that, that equals eight, then take the root of both sides. Uh, so and that's plus or minus uh, square root of eight. Um, and then we could just, well, do you, do you like to have the things underneath the root signs to be as small as possible? So that's two root two. Do we, do we care that it's two? I accept it and I applaud it when it happens. But also at the end of the day, I, I'm, I'm of the opinion that simplifying square roots yeah. is like a good skill to have, but like doing it every time is unnecessary. So then we get X is five plus or minus two root two. So <clears throat> I'm going to write negative five plus or minus two root two. Yeah. Somewhere a little bit, uh, uh, nine something or zero something, I guess. What are your approximation techniques here? Just curious, because I think those uh, are useful. Root two is between one and two. <laughs> okay. Two, root two is between one and four. <laughs> All right. 
and that's all I when care about. When you said about. root between one and two, then you yeah. said two root twos between one and four. I think you can go one step further and say it's between yeah, I two could, and four. But there's no need. For me, <laughs> in my purpose in life, <laughs> there is no need because okay. I know what it is and I can put it in a calculator. If I need that number, I could get it in a calculator. Facts. I'm really more worried about can I, do I know how to solve for X in the first place? Because that mm -hmm. takes thinking that maybe the calculator can't do, although there's some advanced calculators. Now, yeah, so. calculators get better and better every day. Whatever that thing is online. But someone needs to program those calculators. Yes, somebody does. Not me. Um, <laughs> cool. So th this problem is, I think, like the, step, the, the stepping stone to the, right. to the next three. You okay. went to the trouble. Instead of subtracting the eight. Right. And then trying to factor, and spoiler alert, it would not have been factorable. You would have had to use the quadratic formula. <clears throat> I don't, I'm trying not to use that. Yeah, because no one wants to use that. It's, it's, it's just a mess. Because every time um, you use it, you have to sing the song. And, like, da, da, I prefer da, you to use the... Uh, <laughs> there's a, other mathematical formulas named after other muscles in your body other than your quads. So maybe like <laughs> pectoral formula. or <laughs> What? What are your right. quads? Those are your leg muscles, right? <laughs> so I'm you've so done good. something here, and it's the simplest version of it, but you've done something called completing the square. Sure, sure. I, I I've given you something that was not squared, and you completed it. You, made it. you made it so. This is something we say in the videos. Make it so. Make it so. There's, there's a lot of – you're mixing your Star Trek and Star Wars, <laughs> uh, which is fine with me, um, I, you know. Um, because the purists have problems with that and, you know, purists should have problems with that. And we should give them the problems. We have so, some big, uh, Star Trek and, and Star Wars fans in our classes. So let's see if they, uh, that's good. Are up in arms. But, um, what you should do is, is talk about how the Skywalkers would say and make it so, and Spock would use his lightsaber. Like when you start saying things like that, that really sets them off. Just, <laughs> just, just be warned. You'll get a lot of hate mail. A lot of comments in the YouTube channel. In, in the YouTubes. All right. I've given you a new problem here. X squared plus 8X is equal Thank to you negative three. <laughs> I wonder why I did that. Actually, on my page, I didn't do it, but then I did here. I think it's just like... You didn't, you didn't think I would figure it out without that? Ah, uh, well, I did thinking, not. <laughs> I'm thinking you're putting something to complete the square. Oh, so how are you going to complete the square then? Because you, well, you don't want to add the three in factor. You want to do I, this if strategy. I, if I have 8x, then I know I have like, if I'm going to have the same quantity squared, um, then I'm going to have something times x plus something times x. And so, well, that's four times two. So let's do a four. So let's so do you want a four here, here and you want yeah. a four here because yeah, those so will add to eight. Four x plus four. And that would give us a 16 there. So because four times four is 16. And then I would but you break that or take the square root. And then I would write that out as x plus four squared equals uh, negative three. Mm. Mrs. Kuchers, how do you feel about that? I don't know if that's true. You've, bring in, you've broken true. one of the cardinal rules of what mathematics. Did <laughs> what did I do wrong? Well, if you add something to one side. Oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta add 16 to the other side. I'm there sorry. There we are. I just assumed and you guys, you guys left me a space. You can at least know that I wanted to add it to both sides. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right. So, but we do have, you have done, you have now done what truly I mean by completing the square. You have added a constant um, in order to set yourself up to do this thing that you've Correct. been doing in the, the past six problems. Yes. So take it, take us home here. So then you, you root both sides. So you get X plus four equals plus or minus root 13, which is prime. So doesn't, we're not going to go anywhere with that. And so we get X equals four plus or minus root 13. Good to go. keep, you keep forgetting Sorry, to negative. make it negative. Yeah, because you got to subtract. These <laughs> negative and positive signs, these are not for administrators to worry about. These are for <laughs> people, other people who check my work. Well, your and job is to know when students are having negative and positive experiences. So negatives and positives do matter to you. I know. Don't we call them like deltas, though? We don't call them negative. Yeah, well, in education, we do. But when we're, I'm working on the budget, they become important. So I guess <laughs> I probably should pay better attention. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Negative budget. That's not good. All right. How about this one? <laughs> <laughs> all right x squared plus seven x plus five is zero all right so hmm, what am i gonna do um what to do what to do so if i want to come up with something that's nice on the left hand side 
if I wanted to do that, I'd have to come up with something, but it's not going to be a perfect square, right? Because of that weird seven. Weird seven. Oh. Seven's just as cool as every other number. There's there's no hole. There's no. Um, there's no whole number that adds up twice that you can multiply twice that gets that gets you a seven, right? Because you, the only number that happens with that is like a three and a half. Or so you, you said something here, though. You said I'm looking for a number that when added to itself, yes, I get so, seven. Is that so was I, that your strategy over here? So what I what I could do is figure out well if I wanted to have the square x equals x plus three point five x squared, right? So let's say I wanted to have it that. So on one side, I want x plus 3.5 squared. So then I, that means I need to add um, 3.5 squared minus 5 to both sides. Do you mind if I do 7 halves? Can I challenge you to use if fractions? you want to do it as a fraction. I'm a big fan cool. of fractions because I'm a baker. So I'm, I'm a, a big fan having, of fractions. Having taught computer science, we just we use decimals, but that's all right. <laughs> you, you math people, do what you want. We use fractions. It's, good. it's all good. So let's say we have 7 and a half squared. Seven and a half squared. Can I offer up one piece of advice before we proceed? Sure. All right, do you mind if we move that negative five, five to the other side and just worry about the seven? Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna add it and then just, I was gonna have it five plus seven and a half square or seven and a half, seven and a half, or whatever it is, uh, and then on the other side, we would have gotten there eventually. Okay, cool, cool. So sorry that I um, stole your thunder. No, that's all right. Less space, which means we'll finish by the bottom of the page. So, so we're going to add, uh, so it's going to basically be um, plus seven half squared. And so that gives us um, on both sides. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault you forgot to put it on both sides. You're a math teacher. You it was a courtesy this time. <laughs> <laughs> so then... You're going to have uh, x plus uh, 7 half, uh, all quantity squared, uh, equals, uh, what's that, 10 ha uh, negative 10 halves plus 7, 3 halves, negative 3 halves. Well, don't forget, 7 uh, half squared, squared, right? Dang it, never mind. Just put it as negative 5 plus 7 <laughs> half. Just leave it as that for now. Okay, and we'll, we'll, clean, we'll clean it up. Can, we, can I make it a um, 49 over 4? If you have to, sure. But then you might as well make the negative 20 over 4. <laughs> all right, let's do it. <laughs> All right, if you're making me deal with this side first, uh, and then that gives you uh, uh, 29 over 4 on the other side. <laughs> nice. All I'm right. a big fan of that 4 on the bottom. And then too, we cause... just take the, the root of both sides, and that equals uh, root of plus or minus root of 29 over 2. Boom. And that and root's only on the top. The root of the bottom, yeah. And 29 is probably ah. All right, so... Let's take us home. Is it a negative seven halves on the right hand side or a positive seven halves? It's uh, it's a positive seven halves. <laughs> it's a positive seven right now. Yes. But if you move so it to the other side, subtract. The, you just, I'm sorry. You <laughs> said I'm looking on the left where it is right, right now. Where you wrote uh, uh, it. You're okay, gonna have okay. to subtract seven and a half, seven halves from both sides, and then get what you want to get, which is uh, seven plus or minus root twenty nine over our two. Yeah. We drop the negative again. I'm concerned about the budget. <laughs> you know, that's why Miss Castro is there. See, <laughs> so you make sure, you know. <laughs> All right. So I've run out of room for number nine, but we're still going to do number nine. I'm going to stroll down to the bottom of this assignment. Add is a that page. okay? I think so. I'm going to add a page. All right. And then do, 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 do. It'll give us tons of room to do number nine. I'll even write it bigger. Um, let's see number nine here. All right. I'm ready. Number nine I is five x squared minus fifteen yeah. x plus nine is equal to zero. All right. Um, let's do this. Uh, let's add one to both sides. Uh, and then let's divide by five, both sides. All right. Uh, all right. Now, uh, 
man, see, you're doing this again with me. You're not using whole numbers. <laughs> so, um, so you're going to take the two, put it on the other side, subtract two from both sides, and then add in... Um, Yeah, add in uh, one half, uh, let's see, one and a half squared, three halves squared. You did it, you converted it, thank you. <laughs> and then you're gonna get on the left-hand side, you're gonna get X minus three halves quantity squared. And on the right-hand side, you're gonna end up with- um, Oh, here we go. Something in tenths. <laughs> something in intense, camping? Intense, yes, not in, in tenths. <laughs> So negative nine fifths is uh, what's that? Um, and plus nine fourths, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, why why do you want that? Why do you care about that? I want it in tenths. <laughs> I want I want I want negative eighteen tenths oh. plus okay. tenths. Plus how many tenths? Sixth. No fifth. Uh, what's that? Times five. Fifteen. <laughs> so that gives me negative three tenths, right? No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. I'm confused. Three is, is Did 15. you square the... Oh, hold on. I have your camera over stuff. Oh, never mind. It's squared. Forget all of that. <laughs> Don't even worry about that. <laughs> Nine fourths. I had my... Your pictures were over the little square. <laughs> oh. Okay. You got you to gotta get that double monitor lifestyle. But now... Now I don't want it in tenths. I want it in twentieths. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, nine times four is negative 36. Sure. I think. Yeah. 20. Yeah. And then you got uh, times five, so 45. So you got uh, nine twentieths. Cool. All right. It, and then we take the root of both sides. And that gives you X minus three halves is equal to plus or minus three over five root or two root five. And no one and likes roots in the bottom because you math people don't like that. That's what I was taught in high school. All, that's one of, the, one of the two or three things I remember from math in high school is that um, no one likes roots in the bottom of their fractions. How do you, how do you resolve that? I, I didn't. I didn't because I was fine with it. I said the computer, will figure this, the computer will figure this out. There is no need for us to be afraid of this. <laughs> I'm actually like 100%. You know what? So let's just make a statement right now and not simplify right. it. Let's just do it. <laughs> but let's still solve for X. All right. So we add three halves to both sides. I like how we, every single time he simplifies the radical, but he doesn't rationalize the denominator. <laughs> Can you put a question here? Do you agree? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good thing. They can take votes. <laughs> but there's a, there's a nasty answer right there. Yeah. So that's the answer. Do you see a reason why maybe rationalizing the denominator might make our final answer a little bit more pretty? I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is that reason? We don't, we're not going to do it. Find, you, can find still... a, you can find like a nice common denominator okay. and then just have your plus minus on the top mm -hmm. in, the, in the numerator position. But, you know, if you need that, if you need that for your life to be fulfilled, I'll give you that. How is number nine different than the other ones that we did? How is number nine different? Um, and how did you resolve that difference? Well, it was different because the, there was um, something being multiplied by the X squared that I had to deal with. I don't, did any of the others have to deal with that? I don't no. Know. No, this is the only one that had a coefficient. Uh, that's it. Coefficient. Yeah. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> cool. And then how did you resolve the issue? Um, I just figured out, well, I, I need to get rid of that five, so divide by five, but nine's not divis divisible by five, so how would I make it divisible by five? I added one. Boom. And then even, and for, for some people that are looking at this, you could have just divided the whole thing by five. I could have and dealt and with And gotten five. nine fifths because eventually we had nine fifths, right? Right, right. Yeah. You could have just done it straight that way and that would have been fine. But there you uh, go. You have done the process of completing like the square. That long division, so. <laughs> and, um, and you did it, I feel, I feel like, I could be wrong, yes. but I feel like you did it in an intuitive way. I didn't just throw at you this idea of, Here's completing the square. Here are the steps. No, you you kind of you built your way to the end, I think. Yes. I fumbled my way through the end. Yes. Fumbled is a, a, the perfect word. Um, but there you go. All right. We are going to finish up this lesson, but we will release you now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, guys. <laughs> yeah. Do you have so, any uh, wise words to uh, impart uh, for the pre-calc students? 
any wise words or all the any other uh, viewers to see this on YouTube because it's public. I, I would just say, you know, make sure that if any of this doesn't make sense, which, you know, sometimes that happens that you, you spend your time and check in with your teachers on Wednesdays. That doesn't apply to anybody not in our situation. So for the random viewer of YouTube, they're like, what's up with Wednesdays? But for our students, you know, Wednesdays are a check in day. So I would make sure that students are using those to kind of touch base. Um, but it also not just to touch base, but it also helps build those teacher student relationships. Right. So use those Wednesdays. Those are oh. important. All right. Good stuff. All right. We, we, um, you know, I'm thinking Mrs. Corteris, I think we should post this video separate from the other video. Oh, just like close it out. They close it out. We're going to close it out with Mr. Ostrander here and then we'll make the second one and then we'll figure out how to, uh, publish everything. But, we uh, have some, some fancy special effects maybe have a, you know, like, you know, like what's my, what is my outro song? What song? Let me stop the share so we can see all of us on the big screen. <laughs> what, what song will be playing right now when you're playing me out? Well, the problem is if I play a song on the way out, it's going to get flagged as, um, <laughs> as a copyright issue. And I don't want to get that YouTube What if strike. we make up a song? Exactly. Right now, Ooh. Yeah. Well, I can't yeah. beatbox because we've learned through past videos that beatboxing doesn't Bam. carry across. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyway, thanks for having me. All right, this is, this is what we do. This is what we do. We take our hand, uh -huh. and then we whoosh, push it into the camera like that. So do that for us. Okay, we can do okay, that. But you need to do it. You need to say something so you're spotlighted. Say bye, and then go. Whoosh. All right. All right. See you guys. I'm out. <laughs>